Hey guys, Tim McCamus here in the shop tonight. Going to do a little brake line and fire bottle line tech. This is kind of uh, a request from some of our uh, video viewers. They, they were asking different questions on how do you flare this stuff, how do you bend it, how do you use it. So, um, so I got a couple examples here. I've got quarter inch and three sixteenths. So the brake lines are going to be three sixteenths diameter tubing, outside diameter, and the fire bottle lines are going to be quarter inch. We use a stainless steel line. It's just much nicer. I mean, you can use a steel line like a regular plated steel, like would be auto quality, like stock automotive quality. A lot easier to bend, a lot easier to work with, but they're just not that nice. And, and uh, the stainless stuff is much nicer, but it is a lot harder to work with, okay? Because this stuff is stiff, so it's harder to bend, harder to manipulate, harder to make it look nice, harder to make it parallel with the other line. But it's got a lot of advantages. It's not going to corrode. It's really tough. Um, the steel lines, you know, if, you, if they take a little hit, even with a wrench or something, you can dent them. These aren't going to be like that. This stuff is, is very tough. There's a lot of differences between the two. The stiffness is one thing, but the, uh, the flaring of them is, um, there's a lot of difference in that. So, so first of all, in, in standard, like if you buy one of our brake line kits, it comes with all the right fittings. So you want to use um, steel fittings or stainless fittings in the kit along with the stainless line. So what you don't want to do is you, you don't want to use aluminum fittings or the aluminum tube sleeves or tube nuts, okay? What I mean by tube sleeve and tube nut is the tube nut is obviously the, the hex part that's threaded and then the tube sleeve is the little internal part that goes up against the flare and holds it tight to seal against the fitting. So it's not just the nut itself, it's got a little tube sleeve that's a little stepped piece that's got a, a angled flare in it that's going to go behind that flare and support it. So those all need to be steel. Number one, so you can tighten them. I mean, you can't use aluminum nuts and tube sleeves on this stuff because you couldn't tighten it enough to get it not to leak. So you want to be able to use the steel or the stainless where you can get it good and tight. When you go to bend this stuff, it's going to be really tough. Okay, so we there's there's a ton of different benders. So you need the right fitting bender. So you need a three sixteenths and a quarter inch bender. We've got a whole array of these things, and there's a bunch of stuff available. We've got nice little small hand benders with roller wheels on them. We've got some uh, like vice grip type benders that have a quarter and three sixteenths um, die heads on them, where you can get into an area tight and clamp it down, and then roll it around that that vice grip clamp with the with a real small tight radius die in it. Um, we've got a lot of different options for that. So anything that you can find that works uh, that fits the tubing tight is going to be good. These are really tough. I mean, when you go to hand bend this stuff, because you're going to have to hand manipulate it a little bit. Some cars I see guys take their time to do a really nice job routing the lines and making them nice and straight, because this stuff comes in a coil. So you get a coil that's about this big. And one of the things I'm going to suggest when you first get it is you need, you need nice straight pieces. So you want to roll that coil out like on a table or something like this, just kind of roll it out backwards so that it uncoils and then it's still going to be bowed and you got to be careful that you don't try to go down through there like this and straighten it out because it'll be all wavy so you got to take nice big areas and straighten it out so that it gets as straight as possible and uh, we feed a lot of our um, brake lines and stuff into the chassis through little um, extension grommets that we weld into the chassis and slip the the brake line in there helps protect it and uh, keeps it out of the way it also keeps it nice and clean so you don't have a bunch of lines running all over the car I've got a couple of flaring kits here. Let's see, this one's an Imperial Eastman, and this one is a Rigid. So this is, this is a little cheaper kit. This one is nice. This Imperial Eastman is really nice, and it works good for this stainless stuff because it's got some really nice um, dies in it, and it's got a nice handle, and it's this, you drive this with a hex. So it comes with this little ratchet and this little hex adapter here, so when you're tightening this down, you can use this to drive that die in there. Now when you do this stainless stuff, you're going to do what's called a single flare. So if you were using steel tubing, like regular automotive grade, you would double flare that because that material is not strong enough to just do a single flare. And what I mean by double flare is so your tube starts out like this and then you're going to crimp it in and then flare it so like that it looks like that. Okay, so you're actually going to, that flare is going to, so a single flare is the tube just flared out like this the double flare actually rolls that piece in and crimps it over like this. 
So if you look at any um, line, if you go to Napa and just buy a three foot piece of 3 16th brake line, you look at the end of it, it'll be double flared like that. So double flare on steel, single flare on the stainless because you can't double flare this stuff. It's so stiff and so tough that you have to single flare it. Now, one of the best things that you can do to start with is not zip the end of this off with an abrasive grinder, like a Makita grinder, like a four inch cutter wheel or something. If you got a long piece and you're rough cutting it, you can do that. But when you get down to your final cut, you want to cut it with a nice uh, sharp pair of tubing cutters, little small tubing cutters, which is going to give you a nice even square cut on the end. But one thing that it's going to do is because I said the stainless tough, it's going to roll some material to the inside. So as your, as your die wheel goes around there and cuts it, it's going to roll material in before it breaks the tube off, before you split it into two pieces, which is fine, but you need to clean it up. And if you, if you were to look at this, you can see the difference in those two hole sizes there. So this one's been deburred and this one has not. So before you start flaring it, you need to clean that out with a nice sharp countersink and get back to a nice square tube end, not too much flare on it, but nice and square and no burrs inside or out. So you can take a little hand file and do the outside of this tube and clean that up and then use a, a little, uh, like a 45 degree countersink on the inside to cut that. So you want to start nice and clean, and then you're going to want to, there's, there's directions come with these kits, but you're going to want to crimp this holder in here, and then you're going to drive that, um, that flaring die down into the top of this and flare that open. Now you want to make sure to stick this far enough through so that you get a nice big flare. You're going to have to play with this a little bit because you can't flare it so big that your nut doesn't slide back up, but you don't want it too small that it doesn't bite on the adapter fitting. Okay, so you got to get it just the right size. So you want to stick it up just enough through that um, die holder that when you do drive the pointed die down in there, that it, it lays it over and ends up with an OD just big enough for your tube nut to slide over the outside of it. So your, your tube sleeve will be inside that nut. And when that all goes up behind it, that tube sleeve will back up that flare and that tube nut will come up around the outside of it. And it should actually just kind of drag a little bit on the threads when it comes by. If it's a little too big, you can slide the tube nut back and you can take it on a belt sander or a file or something and you can spin it around and knock that diameter down just a little bit so that that nut will slide up on there. And again, if you're flaring this stuff, if you've got a tight fit like this, don't forget to put your tube sleeve and your tube nut on first, okay? So you're gonna have your tube nut's gonna go on, then your tube sleeve, then you're gonna flare it then that stuff's all gonna slide up and bite on the back side of that flare. So very important to have the right tools. We really like this Imperial Eastman kit because the dies are, are nice and hard in it and the tool is like this rigid one, you got these small little slider handles that you're spinning this around with. So you put your holder in here and you crimp it down here and then you drive this down in here. This works okay, but it's not nearly as good as this Imperial Eastman kit. This one, you've just got a lot more handle on stuff and you got a nice, uh, these crimping dies here, which is what holds the tube in place, are really nice because you use the same tool, you use this ratchet here, tighten these down, pinch that tube in there, and then come around here and drive this together. So you just ratchet this down and drive that die into that tube that's going to be sticking up through there like that. And this is what's going to make that flare. So again, you're going to single flare this stainless tube quarter inch for fire bottle lines, three sixteenths for brake lines. And take your time and make a nice job of this and run these nice and straight. We use little plastic uh, clamps on here with an eighth inch pop rivet to hold them in place. I like to space them out like every four or five inches. So make sure to space the clamps out evenly, make it nice straight line down the tube. Um, take your time. It, it takes a little time. I mean, if you're doing if you're building your own chassis and you're putting brake and fire bottle lines on it, you're gonna spend on it. Be about it for a couple days. I mean, it's it's a it's if you do it right, it takes a it takes a couple days to it takes a day to do the brake lines and a day to do the fire bottle line. Don't cut any corners. Practice on some tubing first before you start uh, flaring it on the car and uh, see what kind of fit you've got. And then when you uh, put it together, make sure that your line is is lined up straight with the. Um, with the adapter fitting, okay? So if it's like this and your adapter fitting is coming down straight, you try to slide it up on there, you'll have a little play 
in that nut and it'll start on those threads and you'll be pulling this up at a little bit of an angle well then it ain't gonna seal okay it's gonna leak because you're you know these brake systems you're gonna see you know 1500 pounds of pressure if you get in a panic situation where you're really jamming on the pedal you could see 2000 or more psi on this okay that thing's gonna leak if it's not sitting on there square so make sure it's nice and square if it doesn't fit take take the nut off and twist this line around a little bit and flex it until it sets square with that fitting it might be the fitting might be in an angle but make sure that the tube is running into it straight into that fitting so that you got the best possible chance for that seat to, to bite under that nut and line up with that adapter fitting so that you don't have any leaks. We've been doing this a long time. We can put brake lines on a car, tighten everything up, bleed it, no leaks. I mean, my guys are really good with that, but they, they do it a lot. Don't get discouraged. It takes a little bit of practice to do this stuff. So that's all I got. If you got any questions, we'll be glad to help you out. Um, like I said, our brake line kits come with the line and the fittings, all the proper stuff. You can pick up these uh, flaring tools online. You can, I don't know, you could probably buy it on Amazon or some shit like that, but um, this is a nice kit and um, it will, it will last forever. I mean, we've, we've got a couple of these and we use them all the time and, and they, you can't wear them out. So um, I would suggest getting something like this. Obviously it's more money than this one, but it does a nicer job. So um, check it out. Make sure you um, do your flex lines. You're, you know, you're going to have some soft lines that go from the from the chassis to the each tire and wheel option, you know, so you got one to front, left and right. Rear end housing is gonna have some flex lines that go out to the calipers on the ends. Make sure you understand how to put those together and um, pressure test them if you can. Um, if you don't have a pressure tester, you can put them on the car and, you know, push, pump up the pressure and make sure that they hold. So you gotta make sure this stuff is right. Can't have the brake lines jacked up, all right? We did, last thing you wanna do is get out there and have a leak or have a line blow or something, the end come off. Um, fitting flare crack something like that these these tube nuts you know they're real small and thin if you tighten them up if you over tighten them you can crack the nut and then no breaks so make sure that stuff is right if you if you do mess one up mess up a nut or something you can slide this back and the the, uh, the small tubing cutters have a little groove in them that the flare will ride in so you can just cut the flare off so the little, they're the little small handheld ones. They're only about this big and uh, they'll bite on there and the, the um, cutter rollers have a little groove in them that the flare will ride in so that you can cut that off just underneath there. So if you screw it up and you need to cut it off, slide the nut down, you're only going to cut about a hundred thousands off the end of that thing, cut that flare off of there and then reflare it so you can still save that tube. So that's all the brake line stuff I got for tonight. You guys be careful. Call us if you got questions. Let us know if we can help you.